This is the Christian Circle podcast and you're listening to Pamela Fernandez where we have conversations about Christian living. Here's the show. So I'm Lorelai Sovereign and primarily I am the author on our family's blog which is thiscatholicfamily.com but I also contribute to websites such as um, Catholic Stand and Church Pop and Catholic 365. And I've recently started traveling and sharing my conversion story with parishes in a variety of different places. And then I also was a guest on the journey home on EWTN this December, where I got to share my story there. So you wrote this post, I think it was on Catholic Stand, about raising our children in the faith. And I understand um, from from what I've heard from many people, it is very difficult to raise kids uh, as Christians. So why is it important to raise children within the faith? It's been really important for my husband and I, and I think it is for everyone, because the world that we live in is going to send our kids very specific messages. And I've already seen this in some cases with my daughter, who's only six. She comes home and she asks me questions about if things that she experiences are normal and if she's normal. And you see, even if you're at the grocery store with your kids, you see magazine covers and those give certain messages. Advertisements give certain messages. So I think it's really important that the faith is lived in the home by the parents in such a way that the kids can see it and that the parents include the kids in faith formation the entire time that they're in our homes. We only get them for such a short amount of time. And I don't think that there's really anything more important than making sure that we live our faith actively and embrace that with our entire families. I've seen most of your ideas like on on the post that you shared about how you're talking to your children. Can you share some practical tips? Because there are lots of people who are, who are listening to us and then we've got another post on um, why and the qualities of, of these children, but we don't know how. How are we going to raise these children specifically rooted in Jesus when there are so many external messages that are different that say that that's all nonsense, that's magic, that's not true. So some practical tips on how to raise children in Christianity. Yeah, the first thing that comes to mind is making sure that we know and live our own faith Mm -hmm. and that we understand our faith because our kids are going to get to a certain point where they're going to start having questions about if this is real or is this a fairy tale or should I believe in this? And if we don't know enough to be able to answer them, then we're sending a message to them that it's not super important that they necessarily have the same answers that we do to those questions. So that's one thing. But also, uh, my family and I, we are practicing Catholics, and there are several things that we use within our faith tradition that help us too. We have holy water in our home, and we have a little font for it at the bottom of the stairs. And whenever we pass it, we can use the holy water, and it can remind us of our baptism. So it's something that's just ingrained into our family tradition that is a really tangible representation of our faith. And then also our kids are in mass with us every Sunday. So they see me and my husband sitting, standing, kneeling, praying, participating fully in the mass, and they can see that. And I think our example to them is really huge in that regard. And I think that that's a huge blessing for us as far as being able to have our kids with us in mass. And then I also make sure that I explain things that are going on in mass to our kids. Our daughter in particular has a lot of questions just about what's that? What's going on, mom? And it's really nice to be able to answer her and share with her what's going on in our church service every single week. And how do you deal with um, these uh, questions that she asks? I mean, there are some parents who would be frustrated and would say, go away. Or if they don't have, uh, you know, answers, what do you do in that in that situation? That's a great question. So if the answers to the questions that our kids are asking are tricky for us, then I think maybe it's worthwhile for us to look at digging in a bit deeper into our own faith. There are so many beautiful resources for us to learn about our faith, but I think that there's a huge distinction between perhaps the faith that we grew up with as children, when you're a child and you learn about, in our case, the Catholic faith, and you come to understand it as a child, there's a certain level of depth you can get to, but when you're a kid, you can only go so far. And then as adults, I am a huge advocate of almost re-catechizing ourselves as adults, because when we grow up, we end up thinking about things deeper. We end up having different questions than we had as children. And if we just leave our catechesis to when we were small and what we learned in CCD class or at Catholic school, and we never really went back to it as adults, then there certainly is going to be perhaps an uncertainty in knowing how to answer some questions for our own kids, because we might not have looked at it ourselves in a while. So I think my main advice would be to take a look at learning more about the faith, read the catechism, again, if you are Catholic, or there's some wonderful studies available. Our parish has a membership to formed.org, 
and that has an amazing array of video studies and resources to learn about the faith. Any Catholic bookstore would be able to have books that would help you dig in more. And even my RCIA book that we went through, Catholicism for Dummies, it was incredibly approachable, but it gave a lot of truth about the faith and helped me as an adult coming into the church mm -hmm. understand it really well and feel like I was ready to answer those questions when my kids had them because I understood them better. And how, I know this is uh, later on our list, but how do you deal with these tricky subjects? Like, uh, I know your kids are young, but uh, how do you deal with um, issues on drugs, bullying, sex, violence, all of these things that, it's, it's, it seems to be happening younger and younger and at our primary schools right now. Yeah, we just had a situation where our daughter was bullied. And that was difficult because it was hard to see my daughter hurting, but it also gave us a good opportunity to have a discussion with her about a few things regarding that. And the school handled it very well on their end, and it's all resolved now. But we ended up not only dealing with her own feelings about what happened, but talking to her about how we treat other people. And the whole foundation for that conversation for us was our faith and that we want to emulate the life of Jesus and that we want to show people love. So in our family, we expect that everyone in our family is going to show people love and be kind to kids who are maybe feeling left out and be kind to um, kids who maybe you know don't have friends or are more shy or just don't fit in the same way that maybe some of the other kids do. So we dealt with her own situation with being bullied, but then we turned it into, well, how does our faith inform how we treat people? So that was kind of how we tackled bullying for the first time. Mm -hmm. But then with issues such as sex, and um, I think that's a huge one that every kid is going to face, and that's a particular one where our culture sends a very loud message to our kids about what our culture thinks is okay, which is often at odds with what our faith says is good for us. So in our family, we are very big on theology of the body, which is the whole concept of living your life as a gift to others, and that if you love someone, you're willing the good of the other person. So we try and live that in our own marriage. And when it comes time where our kids do start asking us those questions, we're definitely going to dig into that with them. I think theology of the body is something that every Christian, Catholic or Protestant, should be aware of because it really takes a look at what our sexuality was created for and why it is good and what the best use of that gift is that brings about God's intended purpose for it. And when you look at the foundation of sex from that point of view, then the world's point of view ends up kind of seeming cheap and not as desirable because you understand the truth and the power behind it. And at least in our lives, that's really made a huge difference in our marriage. So I'm excited to talk about that with my kids. And I think they have something, theology of the body for teens, as well as theology of the body for beginners, which really helps break down the work, which was originally written by uh, Pope John Paul II, um, which was very extensive, but they've found ways to make it more accessible to us lay people in the church. So that's a very good resource for everyone in the family, right? Everybody can use it. Yes, absolutely. My husband and I use it, and then we use that language in our home with our kids because it's not just showing love between a husband and a wife. It's how we love anyone, anyone that's made in the image of God, is we want to be gift to them and we want to will their good. And then we just need to know what their good is and respect that and pursue that. So apart from this, what are the lessons that we can learn from the Holy Family itself? So there's um, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. And a lot of times people don't look at the Holy Family in that sense, but we as Catholics look at it very closely. In fact, we even have a feast dedicated to them. So what are the lessons that you can learn from them and apply to our own families? I've really come to appreciate the Holy Family in a whole new way since uh, my own journey to becoming Catholic. I really appreciate the emphasis that's put on it. We actually have a Mary statue in our backyard and our daughter, who's 16 months, her name is Mary, and she goes and hugs that statue all the time. And it's very sweet. And I think that just as a family, I think often I relate the most to Mary at this phase of my life because of having children and thinking about the sacrifice that she made in raising Jesus and uh, knowing who he was and watching what happened to him and being faithful in all of it. So I think faithfulness is a huge lesson that family, the Holy Family, they faced a significant amount of struggle and suffering and just the beautiful faithfulness and that she didn't leave her son's side just gets me. I was looking at my son who was playing outside the other day and I thought, I don't know if I could let him go through something like that. And it was a huge moment for me to realize that the idea of giving up my son, how intense and how powerful that would be. So just their faithfulness through it all and the fact that they all worked together for God's will. They all worked together for God's will. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph knew that their purpose here 
was bigger than their own comfort. They knew that it was bigger than their own desires and they were obedient in all of it. And it's such a huge example because, especially because of the suffering that was in their picture and in life, we're going to face suffering. There's no way to get out of here without experiencing pain and faithfulness through suffering and obedience, no matter what the cost, I think is another huge lesson we can learn from them. And they went through a lot of struggle in a sense, right from the very beginning, they were fleeing Herod, then they, they would travel back and forth, and then they struggled with poverty, and they struggled with death and grief, and, and together they've gone through almost all the hardships that we experience in life, but they experienced it in totality to some extent. Yes, it's such a comfort, I think, when we learn about and think about and even meditate on some of those sufferings, because you're right, it is something that we can identify with. And I know we have the beautiful artwork that we have with the Holy Family and the halos around their head. And it's beautiful to think about them in that more uh, heavenly sense, in that more saintly sense. But it's also a beautiful thing to think about Mary and Joseph on the dirt in a manger with animals around them and experiencing, like you said, the struggles that humanity faces. And it's good to know that we aren't alone. And it's good to know that there are holy people who have gone before us and who have remained obedient. So how do you incorporate this into your own family when you, you think about all these things? Um, how do you apply this lesson of faithfulness to your own family life? We definitely have had our small share, I would say at this point, of suffering. And whenever we do come across a situation that is difficult, we try and use it as a lesson to uh, turn our children and our family and our own heart as a group to God. And just as one example of this, we lost a dear family member of mine in February. Uh, she ended her own life, which was very traumatic. And my kids knew her. She was my aunt. They knew her. They had a relationship with her. They liked her. She was very kind to them. And we had to share with them and not everything about what happened, but enough, you know, that they knew that she died. And we dealt with that grief together as a family. We used Lent to actually pray a decade of the rosary for her every day during Lent because we wanted to still will her good and we wanted to still pray for her and have our prayers help her outside of time in whatever way that she needed support. So I think it's just when you come across those moments where there is suffering and where you feel some of that human experience that is difficult to make sure that you're setting an example for your kids to turn it to God and that in times like these, we stick closest to God. We stick close as we can to him because this is how we're going to get through it and this is how we're going to grow and how we can remain faithful. I'm so sorry about your aunt. I think you wrote a post about it as well on your website, right? Yes, I did. I think I'm going to write a follow-up to it soon. Uh, she passed away towards the beginning of Lent, I think. So it ended up being helpful for us to have that structure of making a sacrifice for her every day and working through trusting God and his grace and his love and making sure that we don't neglect to pray for her. It was very, um, it was a comfort to be able to have the structure of Lent during a really difficult time. And you also raised uh, this point of um, prayer, and I know this is not uh, part of our list, but how do you get uh, children to pray? How do you incorporate prayer into your everyday life? Because more and more families are finding themselves too busy to pray or having an excuse to pray. But how can you incorporate daily prayer with your children and get them to pray? That's a wonderful question. In our family, I'm always looking for ways to add in more. But currently, every single day before uh, dinner together, we pray a meal prayer. And so that's at least one discipline. And then also before bedtime, we have another time of family prayer. And that often looks like we might pray, pray a couple we might pray a couple of the recited prayers, uh, Hail Marys, Our Father, the Guardian Angel Prayer. But then we also often open it up and give anyone in the family a chance to pray whatever's on their heart. Because as someone who came from a Protestant background, I was used to just praying whatever was on my heart. And I didn't really rely on any recited prayers. But now as someone in the Catholic Church, I really enjoy the beauty of some of these recited prayers that we have. So we often combine the two and make sure that we're saying at least a couple of prayers together and then that we all have a little bit of time to talk to God and share our hearts with him. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, do you have any um, tips or advice for people who are raising kids right now, wherever they may be, whether they're starting, whether they're small kids, teenagers, anything, even grown-up kids, if you have any advice for people raising children and making them stay Christian for the long haul? I hope that I would be able to have you talk to me maybe even 15 years from now and that I'd be able to <laughs> feel like my kids are on a good, good 
on a good path. But I often think about the saying when you're on an airplane where they say if the cabin pressure drops to make sure you put on your own oxygen mask before putting on the oxygen mask of someone next to you who might need help. And I think making sure that we ourselves as parents have a living and active faith that we're spending time growing and developing our own faith walk is going to speak so much louder than any words we might say to our children if we didn't have that. If they see us in prayer, if they see us reading books about our faith, if they see us being the kind of person that our faith teaches us that we should be, if they see us living our life and trying to pursue a similar kind of selflessness that Jesus showed his whole life, I think that that is going to be huge. And that's sort of our main game plan right now is that we want to make sure we have a living and active faith and that we also incorporate these routines and these structures. So we have the crucifix in our home. We have the rosary that we incorporate some of the sacraments into our everyday lives or sacramentals. So the kids will see us going to confession. They'll learn what confession is. They'll see us receiving communion. They will learn what communion is. And teaching it and living it every day is our game plan and a lot of prayer, I think, too. Lots and lots of prayer. Tell us a little bit about your book and also tell us uh, where people can find you so they can contact you if they need to call you to their parish for speaking engagements or otherwise. Sure. My primary website is thiscatholicfamily.com. And on there, we write about many different things. It's a lot of apologetics, so sometimes defending the faith and sometimes explaining why I came to a certain conclusion I did on my journey to the Catholic Church. And then sometimes it's just about our family and things we're going through as a family with young kids and raising them in the faith. And on there, there is a contact tab and it has information that you can fill out a little form and it'll send me an email. And I'm usually pretty quick about getting back to people and I'm always happy to talk to people about things. And then if anyone wanted to watch my conversion story on EWTN, it's on YouTube under Lorelei Sovereign, The Journey Home. And that's another way to learn a little bit more about how I got to where I am today. And what about your book? I actually am in the process of working on it. So I would I would love to very soon be able to tell you that there there is one and I've been asked about that a lot. So it is in the works and there will be information posted on our website as soon as it is complete. Okay, great. So we'll watch out for the book and then yeah. we'll see you soon. Uh, maybe if we have some more uh, topics on uh, parenting, we can reach out to you. Yes, I would absolutely love that. It was such a pleasure to be able to talk with you today. Mm -hmm.